morning everyone. Well, it might not be morning for you, but as you can see, it is currently morning for me. So happy Saturday. Uh, I was trying to think of what I wanted to do for this intro, but I think I'm just going to start making some music. So see you guys in there. All right, everyone. So today's going to be another voiceover because technology sucks and the compute, the uh, camera that I used just didn't want to work again after that first video for the intro. But I'm not too mad about it considering that I just got this microphone today. So I'll be able to use that because this was intended to be, you know, like a whole vlog session to where I was going to be talking to you guys while I was making the beat because I, well, I'd much rather do that than these voiceovers. You know, this didn't really feel very natural for me. Right now we just got this, this chord progression coming on. I don't know why, but this chord progression took me forever to make. Like you're going to see several cuts. I still want you guys to see the process of it, so that's why I'm not cutting it out completely. And once again, I'm only using really just two different chords and then just changing the voicing of them. And I really want to get the chord progression right because it's kind of what drives this entire track. Usually I kind of have it tucked in the background, but this one is, is very present. been really into adding some strums to the my pianos recently usually just after like I'll, I'll clone the first four bars and then just add some diversity I'll just do the strum Like, you guys don't know how much I had to cut up this chord progression because it took me way longer than you just saw. It took me about about 15 minutes just for the chords. And now here I'm just going to do the arpeggiate mode. I just cloned the, the progression, took it up an octave, and then did like a downward arpeggiate. Because melodies are hard. <laughs> Whenever you see my mouse just kind of do nothing, it's because I'm just trying to listen for what's going on in the track, and then you'll see it freak out for a second because I'm like, okay, what do I want to go do now? Add something into atmosphere here. I really wanted to get some sort of bells. Just looking for sounds right now. I liked this one. Gonna go and use that. Record it into Omnisphere. I've been doing that a lot recently, creating my own melodies and then putting it into Omnisphere so I can get more... You can do a lot more with what you already got. So instead of adding like three other instruments, I'll just... For variety, I'll just record it into Edison and then, uh, you know, put it into Fruity Slicer afterwards. You can change up the attack, you can detune it a little bit. And here I'm just listening to where I want to cut it off, to where it loops perfectly without any clicking. 
That seemed pretty perfect. I'm gonna go and drag it on over to the to the playlist. Put in the fruity slicer. I wanted to give it kind of like a dark tone to it. So to achieve those darker tones, you just gotta play with the, the pitching a little bit. That's another really good thing that I like to do in Fruity Slicer and why I record all the melodies recently is because I enjoyed adding a reverse at somewhere in there. Play with the pitching a little bit, give that darker tone. Increase it. Well, finding where I want to put the attack at, that was way too much, i got to lower it down a little bit. It's about good. Maybe a little bit lower? I'm just kind of here to make sure everything works together. That's one problem that I had when I was first beginning is that I would, oh, this sounds good, and then I put it in the track and then just completely keep it out of mind that, oh, does it fit with the track itself? And most of the time the answer was no. Get some drums going. I was getting a really mellow vibe from this as well, so I didn't really do anything too crazy. every four steps this time because I didn't want to get it too messed up with uh, adding too many hi-hats so that's why I just put four in every four steps instead of every two still needed to swing a little bit though so you gotta add some in there I liked how that sounded, but I feel like it added, added a little bit too much energy, and I didn't want too much for this track, it was very... I feel like for this track it would be more of like the artist's job to, to really run through it. I just like to add some uh, lower hi-hats as well. If, if your hi-hats are the chords, then your, how should I put this, uh, your, your higher hi-hats are, like in C5, those are going to be your melody, and then your, the lower hi-hats are going to be more like your chords, you know, they're going to progress the melody through. Which is why I like to think of my hi-hats my hi as a, uh, type of melody of their own, instead of just putting them all willy-nilly anywhere.
think it's very important that when you're working on something this specific, you know, every little click is calculated, that you don't just focus in on that one sound, you gotta see how it fits with the rest of the track. Think of it as a whole and not each individual item. Usually I would go and, and uh, change the knobs for the, you know, the attack and the decay and everything like that in the 808, but here I kind of like how I was just going, riding out. I didn't want any crazy slides or anything yet, so I just kept them like that. In the right key. slide effect because even though the notes aren't dragging out and it's just playing the normal sample if you add a slide it's still gonna change it I thought that was a very subtle change so I want to make it a little bit more dramatic Alright guys, that is going to be it for the video. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Uh, subscribe if you guys want to hear some more, I can only get better at this, so stay in tune, man. Alright, have a good one guys, happy Easter!